Uh, we're back live. Uh, this is RTVI. We're back from New York City. We're going to discuss the most interesting topic of the upcoming uh, and the past week uh, with guests from both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. And the, for the next hour, I'm with you. My name is Lisa. He won because the elections were falsified. Uh, that's what Trump wrote uh, yesterday. Afterwards, he deleted this uh, message. Uh, uh, mass media uh, wrote that uh, uh, Trump has accepted his defeat uh, by doing so. However, uh, uh, have a new theory that uh, Pfizer has uh, held on to the release of the vaccine news, uh, and uh, if they release this news before the election, uh, the, the Trump's uh, uh, chances might be higher to win the election. Uh, today, another company, Moderna, has uh, published similar results, uh, claiming that 95% uh, of people are uh, healed on the stage free trials. Uh, and. Uh, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, hidden uh, uh, currents uh, when uh, we follow this uh, new announcements of uh, pharmaceuticals uh, releasing uh, the um, the cure, uh, and uh, some say that there's going to be released uh, up to 20 million doses uh, on the U.S. markets, uh, and it's not uh, planned to be exported so far. Ну что ж, теперь перейдем к сегодняшним темам. Выборы в США прошли, но с президентом почти определились. Two other topics. The elections in the United States have passed, and the president has almost been decided. Europe has been following American elections with bated breath, and had a sigh of relief after Americans chose Biden. After all, it was Trump who was happy that UK left European Union. It was him who raised tariffs on European goods, and it was him who threatened to leave NATO, demanding that the European countries increase their defense. Pending. Trump withdrew from the Paris Clement Agreement uh, uh, and uh, cut off uh, WHO funding in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, on this background, Biden is uh, seen by Europe as uh, practically a savior, but uh, until Biden officially took office, the trade war continues. Uh, the European Commission suspected that Amazon is violating antitrust laws in France and Germany. They analyzed 80 million transactions and 100 million products on the site and concluded that Amazon prioritizes its own products. Now Amazon faces a fine 10% of all annual revenue for uh, 2019. Uh, representatives of the company have already stated that they do not agree with the suspicions of the European Commission. Uh, let me remind you that uh, in mid-June, the European European Antitrust Regulator has uh, launched an investigation against Apple as well. In particular, uh, violations of uh, competition rules uh, in the Apple Pay service and the App Store. Uh, European uh, Union uh, impose uh, uh, duty on goods from the uh, United States, uh, which are intended for delivery in Europe uh, in the amount of $4 billion. American uh, Boeing uh, planes are also under sanctions, uh, and obviously such measures are uh, being taken in response to the interaction of uh, extra duties on Airbus. In October 2019, uh, Washington, through court, uh, won the right to set tariffs on uh, goods from uh, Europe uh, itself. Uh, and in the same month, uh, duties of 10% were introduced on airplanes and 25% on some uh, food produce. Uh, what are the future prospects uh, for the trade war between the United States and European Union and uh, whether the situation will change uh, for the better uh, with a uh, change of power in White House? Let's discuss this with our experts. And uh, right now, I would like to invite Mark Soriano, who is an economist and the president of a holding company uh, from New York City. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for having me. Uh, all right, so first question for you. Uh, in your opinion, uh, mm, let's uh, take a look at the short-term perspective first of all. Uh, the actions of Trump uh, to impose uh, new tariffs uh, and duties, uh, you know, this uh, trade war insinuations uh, with uh, Europe, uh, this is what we're talking about. Uh, uh, America started it, if you think about it. Uh, in the short term, uh, this is uh, beneficial for American uh, economy or no? For the American economy to increase tariffs on imported goods, yes, short term for sure. Long term, not so much because the agreements between both continents, we have to keep in mind, Europe is one of our strongest allies and economic partners. So we need to play fair. We need to play fair. So in the short term, for sure, long term, I don't think that's going to be uh, the solution. All right, so what might be the consequences uh, of what's going on right now? Um, you know, uh, to play those games uh, with uh, tariffs and duties and uh, get some dividends in the longer term, uh, uh, 
you need to be very um, clear on your intentions, uh, but uh, we don't see any long-term uh, well-thought-out policy, especially given the uh, change of power. Uh, so uh, what do you think about, uh, like, for example, a European Union uh, uh, targeting Amazon? Uh, um, and uh, what other consequences uh, we might see on the European side? Sure. So, listen, if you're a company and we happen to have also business in Europe and you are making money in that side of the world, you have to pay taxes. Period. Now, we do have arrangements where there is a tax withhold tax law that if you pay taxes there and you file your taxes as an American corporation in the U.S., you would get a credit from the U.S. government. So... It's a win-win situation, and there are ways of approaching this smartly. All right, so in this uh, trade war, who do you think is going to be uh, the winner? Uh, are there even uh, winners? I love it that they call it trade war. Uh, this is just, uh, it's like having any partnership between companies between, in this case, regions. We have to understand that there are also Asian markets playing in between us. So we need to consider what is going to be best in the long term for both regions. Now, everything relies on what is a per capita, income per capita, standards of economy. So you have to you have to take into account a lot of this, population size. Now, our, our company from the US standpoint that are providing services, providing products to the EU, well, in this tech acceleration period, which is the next 10 years, we are definitely ahead of, of the European by 3x almost. So, can they benefit from this? Uh, they have to increase their capital investments into the sector if they want to be more competitive with us. But the question is, why do we have to stop producing or being who we are in the market? That is really the, the main question here. And we shouldn't. Uh all right, so right now many people are saying, uh, including European experts, that uh, once Biden uh, uh, comes uh, to power, the situation might, uh, let's call it, improve. Uh, but uh, uh, we don't think that uh, sanctions against Iran or Russia are going to go away uh, anytime soon. And uh, uh, what do you think is going to happen with uh, European companies that are trying to deal with Russians uh, and uh, Iranians? Uh, and uh, what, what's your outlook on the future? Well, I don't think the U.S. should have any say in that in the first place. That's their problem. It's their issue. They should be taking care of that themselves. But in terms of what are the collaborations between whatever the U.S. is doing with those two nations, if we're being more specific, then it's relevant to what kind of commerce we have going on and what are the partnerships between that. I know that fracking in the oil sector, is it's not well seen by the Europeans, for example, but it is an essence of our economy as well. Now, we do know that in the next 10 years, the oil is going to meet its high demand, its peak. So there is one of the main reasons why the electric vehicle sector is moving and trending in that direction. Maybe we should start looking at that, too. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marco. We appreciate you being uh, with us on our broadcast. Uh, always great to see you. Thank you so Thank much. You and uh, you can just